Thank you, Diksha. Greetings, everyone. Uh, first of all, a small correction. I'm not the chair of Tropical Agriculture Platform. I think uh, I just got my old CV from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm right now chairing GFAR. Uh, I was the chair of uh, Tropical Agriculture Platform. Anyway, uh, first of all, uh, let me say we are running behind schedule. And we are 25 minutes behind schedule. So I may, without asking organizers, I will make this panel discussion only for about 10 to 15 minutes. So that they save some time. And the next speakers, you know, should not get restless as some of us did. So now uh, coming to the topic, agriculture innovation system. We, we have had excellent presentations. Dr. Lava, wonderful, rich presentation on the importance of digital and data-driven innovation. Degi, uh, excellent presentation on what is an agriculture innovation ecosystem, what approach we should have, how we should do capacity building, and so on. And Dr. Hilgegaard, I think you had the last hammer on the nail saying how we can go global, how we can have the partnerships, how we can scale up the partnerships, and how we, we have plans in GFAR to really make sure that innovation becomes at all level, right from farmers to the, to the uh, scientific level, something which is the need of the day. With the UN Food System Summit, we all have realized the importance of innovation. And FAO has come up in the last two years, uh, they call it Baby RTO. Baby means a just two year old outlook program, agriculture technology, uh, agri, agri food system technology and innovation outlook. Uh, which is a baby RTO. I'm here in FA only for those meetings I came here. This is something which is very interesting, which is going to capture all the innovations, all kinds of innovations, and more so for tracking the impact of that, which I think will be very good for the transformation in the agri food system. Now, uh, I will first come to Dr. Lava Kumar to you because your presentation was so rich, so rich that uh, like the importance of data, the big data and the revolution you said with the big data, big data chain reaction and the systematic data harnessing you have talked about with some good examples. I think that holds key for future. I just want to know from you uh, some examples which may help everyone to understand on the digital sequence information, which has helped in crop improvement, especially for the plant genetic resource programs. Can you give me uh, some examples and how, how that has been used globally? Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Ravi. And once again, my apologies if I have taken more time for my presentation. Yeah, digital sequence information is now uh, is, is driving the crop improvement work. Um, currently, almost all gene banks and the, the breeding programs which are focusing on the food crops, the most important food crops, uh, they we can claim that almost all those crops have been sequenced fully. And many collections are now uh, going for what they call full genome sequencing of their core collections so that there is more uh, so that there is the sequence available for diverse uh, genetic resources, which can then be used to understand uh, the diversity of different traits, etc. So this this information is currently being used, especially for the gene bank management, improving the gene bank management. It is one of the major applications, and also identif identifying the traits without doing phenotyping, even for the collections which are only present in gene banks, never put in field for a long time. Just by sequencing from the seed, we should be able to now identify whether that particular accession has the trait of interest. So this is going to save enormous resources and also useful, especially for those crops which have 
which are seeds are recalcitrant. So this is one application. And also likewise in breeding, as I mentioned, um, to enhance the speed of the, the breeding process they're currently being used. But uh, the use of digital sequencing in agriculture is not without uh, its challenges. As you may know, now it is a very big topic in international plant treaty because now countries can access uh, uh, the use of the material without actually accessing uh, genome, I mean the genetic resources. So some member states are not entirely convinced that that uh, digital uh, sequencing of the germplasm is 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 the right way without taking appropriate permissions from the material owners. So I just use these two examples and I pause there uh, because there can be more examples um, how this data being used. Thank you, Dr. Lavkumar. I'll come back to you if time permits. What you said is very helpful. Yeah, uh, Deggy, uh, Dr. Delgarma, let me call you Deggy, if you don't mind. Uh, you have given a clarity on what an agriculture innovation ecosystem is and how FAO looks at it and how uh, the tropical agriculture platform had been using it for capacity development, develop modules and all. And when you were saying that, you mentioned about the functional capacities. Can you slightly highlight the importance of functional capacities apart from technical capacities? And probably how can we blend it for a given kind of a innovative work we have to do? Thanks, Ravi, uh, for that uh, very important question. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, tropic, you know, let, let me just say a couple of things about Tropical Agriculture Platform. Uh, you know, I, as I briefly mentioned, it's a G20 initiative with uh, over 50 member organizations across the globe promoting agriculture innovation systems and capacity development for innovation. And uh, the emphasis uh, there is on functional capacity. Functional capacity, uh, we call it functional capacity. Some people call, call it soft skills and the um, tropical agriculture platform, uh, agriculture common framework for capacity development emphasizes four main capacities plus one capacity to collaborate and partner, capacity to engage in policy dialogues and strategic discussions, capacity to navigate complexities and, and <clears throat> capacity to uh, uh, engage in uh, in discussions effectively, uh, etc. So um, you know technical capacities. I'm an agronomist by training, and I, I know about crop production and and uh, what is conservation agriculture, etc. But then if I lack capacity to partner and collaborate or facilitate, let's say um, discussion. Um, and communicate technical information in an effective way that limits my, uh, my capacity as an individual and then the, my organization's capacity where I work to, um, to bring um, that technical knowledge to, to maximum benefit uh, and, and broader uh, innovation with others uh, in partners. Uh, so, um, you know, in FAO, we look at uh, functional capacities just as important as technical capacity, and we uh, work with regional research and extension organizations, as well as education organizations in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, for one of the, one of them um, to to institutionalize and to integrate this functional capacity in a work of innovation and in in facilitation of innovation processes across, <clears throat> across all the regions. I'll Thank stop you. here, Ravi. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gagi. It's very helpful. Uh, Dr. Hildegard, uh, you made an excellent presentation on where Global Forum of Agriculture Research and Innovation is now and where it is moving forward. So you mentioned about uh, one point on the Global NARS Consortium, which is being envisaged. Can you say a few lines about it? What will be the objective? Why should we have it in moving forward in the agri-food uh, transformation space? 
With great pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, it's really worth uh, spending a minute on. Uh, I hope uh, because it will hopefully be a system which brings all the many things that has been mentioned, have been mentioned in the session and in the conference at large together uh, in, a, in a meaningful way. Uh, we have been entrusted uh, 27 years ago to be the NARS Secretariat. Uh, a secretariat for the National Agricultural Research Systems. They are the ones uh, storing most of the uh, gene plasma. They are the ones advising policies. They are the ones making changes or not being able to make changes. So it's really important that we, that they have a voice, that they have access, they can work in research and innovation uh, systems more than uh, they have been able to, unfortunately. Um, we haven't been following up on that mandate very much, let me say so self-critically, but we are all for doing it now. And we have to say a big thanks to the uh, CGIR system for also allowing us to do so. You may remember there was a high-level advisory panel that they called last year to advise on how to better partner with the Global South. And we were happy to be represented with all the executive secretaries of the regional forum for agricultural research and innovation on that very panel, the report you can find on the um, CGIR website. Uh, and if you look at the recommendations, there is a need to engage more and on a sustainable basis with the NARS, especially from the Global South. So we try to do our homework and, and bring people together and represent them or be the matchmaker so that the CG research, and we have heard amazing things, thanks to Dr. Kumar, uh, we're in touch with the farmers, with the countries, with the national agricultural research systems, and we share that because we know innovation solutions are coming up, are happening on the ground. So let them have their say uh, on research initiatives when they're initiated. Let them not only uh, be the ones uh, uh, to hand to, to implement when when we feel like as research we have done our job. So uh, a very important initiative to come. Watch for it. Uh, we have this Bangkok declaration, which you can find on our website, which shows the, the ambition in detail. And um, we, we do a couple of things now, a survey, a memorandum of understanding. We will have an advisory uh, committee and we hope to see some of you at, uh, in September next year, when we will hopefully be able to officially establish this global NARS consortium. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, coming back to you, uh, Dr. Lava Kumar, uh, of the many uh, data-driven technologies you presented, I was like very keenly listening to the seed tracker part, where you said uh, you developed the national seed information system and farmers information management system. And I think for one of these, you got the Google award also, if I'm right. Now, uh, my question to you is, first of all, congratulations for, for such a nice uh, output of innovation you have done, which I believe has a high application, not only in Africa where you have done, uh, it has to be global. I mean, in Asia and Latin America also, I believe. Now, how much is the seed tracker being used in Africa right now? How you look at the scaling up of this innovation or application of it before we take it to other continent? Yeah, thank you. Um, on the sea tracker, we piloted this initially in Nigeria for cassava, for mainstreaming cassava seed system, because there are two things, one development of innovation, and then the second one is opportunity for scaling. There are a lot of challenges with when it comes to scaling, especially when you're starting from ground zero. So we had an opportunity through a Gates Fund, Bill and Melinda Gates funded project to scale, integrate these two as part of the cassava um, seed system project in Nigeria. So at the moment, now it has been made as an official tool. All uh, cassava seed producers, there are nearly thousand in Nigeria for all classes, breeder foundation certified. They're all using this tool regularly. And then simultaneously, we started implementing this in Tanzania as a second country. There also now it has been mainstreamed for cassava. And uh, with regard to the other continents, we also have developed this system for Embrapa in Brazil. They want to use this too for cassava. So it's a Portuguese version. And then in Vietnam also, Vietnamese came to us 
and we developed the prototype, but uh, we have given to them, but we did not receive much feedback. So this tool is adaptable for different continents and it is ready for scaling. We need an opportunity to pilot it. It's very important piloting the innovation to understand the local context, the use, and then tailor made it to fit to the situations. And in terms of the future scope, where we are looking at, um, now we have additional funding to expand this tool for other crops. And now we are covering most of the RTBs like yam, sweet potato, uh, banana, plantain, and uh, potato mm -hmm. in four countries in the next three years. We also looking to expand this for other crops. The system is ready to use for any crop. It is crop independent, but right. um, we are taking step-by-step -step approach. Thank you so much. I think you you need to be talking to the regional networks, you know, uh, in different continents because that's an ideal platform for scaling up. In one go, you reach to many countries. Uh, you can really showcase it and make it more more popular. But that is a need of today. The seed cracker, I believe, is very very crucial. Thank you and congratulations Thank for you. such an achievement, Dr. Lava. Thank you. Uh, coming back to you, uh, Deggy. Now, uh, you had been a big promoter of agriculture innovation ecosystem. And how FAO has really popularized this ecosystem, uh, innovation ecosystem across the world in how many countries? Because if I'm right, the, the work has started about seven, eight years back and mm -hmm. like, how, what is the outreach now? In how many countries uh, are you there now? Okay, thanks. Um, so the, um, you know, work on innovation in FAO has always been there, but uh, with uh, a specific context of uh, um, tropical agriculture platform, functional capacity development, agriculture innovation systems approach, we have been working since 2010 and uh, 12 was our first, FAO's flagship publication that was launched on uh, family farming innovation, uh, state of food and agriculture publication. And since then, uh, the, um, in the framework of tropical agriculture platform, the first capacity development framework was piloted in uh, eight countries uh, funded by European Union uh, across three regions, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And then later on, two more countries were funded by bilateral donors. Then now we're currently implementing a second phase, let's say more scaling of the approach in nine countries, again, and across three different regions. Uh, then uh, we also are bringing it up to a regional level and we are engaging all regional uh, important actors in research, extension, and education systems to bring it to a regional level and more mainstream it into a regional um, organizations and their work streams so that it can be also promoted beyond FAO in, in, uh, across the globe. Thank you. That's quite useful. And so your plans are eventually to reach in the coming five years, like you you want to be reaching everywhere or you just leave it now and you let people take up? Yeah, um, let me also add that, you know, Tropical Agriculture Platform, which is main platform promoting agriculture innovation system uh, has uh, over 50 some member organizations across, other con across, all, across the globe and they also, uh, you know, not only FAO, but they also promote this approach as well. In the context of FAO, um, this approach has been integrated into an, our capacity development uh, activities and framework in uh, agri-food system, in the broader agri-food system transformation. And uh, so um, the, we have many other projects, uh, which is not necessarily called strengthening innovation system. Maybe it's called promoting conservation agriculture or sustainable intensification. However, there is always now component on capacity development, agriculture innovation, capacity development for agriculture innovation, and which will ha also have a functional capacity development component as well. So it's 
also integrated in our main general work stream, which will then, uh, you know, be uh, promoted and scaled in most of our activities that has you know, this focus. Thank you, Negi. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have Hilge Garg? I think she has I left. think she had to leave, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Uh, I think the time is also exceeding. We will like to stop here, but first of all, let me very warmly thank uh, Dr. Lava Kumar for your very rich presentation. Uh, Deggy for your very lucid presentation, giving the basics and how we are moving ahead. And Hildegard for showing how we can scale up innovations by scaling up the partnerships uh, at, at the global level. So I would also like to express my thanks to the organizer, uh, especially to, to the chair of IAS, uh, Professor Zongru Lee, and to Michael Few, and of course to Shani, who, who has been chasing me uh, to make sure that we, we have a good session. And thank you, Geksha, for, for moderating so well. It is your maiden moderating, I know. With this, I would like to thank each and every one of you. And I would just say uh, we have entered into the era of innovation from the research outputs now and long live innovations. It's a lot to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ravi Ketrapal. Thank you, all the panelists, for this wonderful, insightful discussion. 